everybody, welcome to Wrestling News with the Dudes. So today, I'll be talking about what happened this week since last Sunday. So, first off, if you have watched GTS Wrestling, especially those two videos from yesterday and today, Onslaught and Dominic Truce are going to be the next challengers for the GTS Tag Team Championships. And also, we have the new... GTS United States Champion after Duhop relinquished the US title thus we have the six-pack challenge Joey Angelo is once again your new GTS United States Champion also Grimm is set to face Kurt Bale once again at the GTS Obesius Regal Rumble this weekend but the question is will we see the hero of heroes back to normal after a few days of being poisoned by Tito the clown speaking of that we also saw two of the most embarrassing rematches for the YouTube title after Grimm lost the YouTube title first one was for Grimm's fanny pack which he failed to cash it in and the other one was for his rematch clause which he also failed Due to the fact that not only he was poisoned by Tito, he is also drunk as well as drinking hundreds of alcohol and vodka. Honestly, it's just pretty embarrassing and sad to watch someone who's not even the same person as we know today. Although the question is, who will put a stop on Tito the Clown? When will we ever going to see the old Grimster or the old Hero of Heroes back in his normal body. Tune in for another episode of GTS Wrestling this week. Now, it's time for some questions that people want to know. So, here's a question. How come Grim doesn't upload GTS video every damn day? So, here's what Grim said. He stated from now on he would only upload about five to six videos a week sometimes we could still have seven videos a week which is pretty normal so here's the thing i'm assuming that every gts pay-per-view from now on after the conclusion there won't be any videos on the day after the gts main event match video that was released on youtube and here's another question why do we always have clown storyline in gts wrestling here's the thing Grimm is doing this because of the views and more money. Fun fact, did you know the number one most viewed video on the main channel was Creepy Clowns vs YouTubers Insane Fatal 4 Way Championship Match. It only had like 8.6 million views and counting. So really, is Grimm actually running out of ideas or something? Cause I would not be in this situation like those stooges who can't even make up their minds or even use the same idea all just for the views and the money oh wait that's Vince McMahon anyways I wonder since GTS wrestling is a skit parody show like WWE or sports entertainment show not AEW which you all know that it is scripted maybe he should I don't know Hire me as a writer for GTS Creative Team. Wait a minute. Is there a thing? I mean, is there a GTS Creative Team? No? No? Just Grim? The one with the brains? The one who's making decisions and booking matches? The one who runs the brand? Well, alright. At least he's not bad as Vince McMahon, considering that he's the one who's responsible for a controversial ending from last Sunday's pay-per-view show. Speaking of that, let's talk about Hell in a Cell. So people may say that Hell in a Cell 2019 was one of the most controversial pay-per-view next to Crown Jewel, just because of the ending. Well, here's the thing. Neither Seth Rollins nor Bray Wyatt would show up on the following night afterwards due to the fact that of the fans backlashing the ending. But at least Bray Wyatt show up after Raw goes off the air. Anyways, let's get on to a review of Hell in a Cell. Natalia defeated Lacey Evans by submission. And this was a pre-show match before we go on to a main card. Now speaking of the main card, we kick things off with a Hell in a Cell match for the Raw Women's Championship. 
And wow, 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 what a match actually. This is honestly three times better than that one Hell in a Cell match from 2016. You know where the women's main event, the pay-per-view? Yeah, I'm talking about Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. And you know what I like about this match was when Becky Lynch does a dropkick while Sasha Banks was sitting on a chair inside the cage. Man, that dropkick reminds me of Katsuyori Shibata. Becky Lynch is still your Raw Women's Championship. And a fun fact, Sasha Banks is the only woman to lose Hell in a Cell match twice. And next match we had Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper in a Tornado Tag Team match. I thought it was a bad match, but I gotta say that match was pretty decent. We had some holy shit moments, especially that one thing that we saw was when Roman Reigns speared Eric Rowan through the announce table, was, which was one of the highlight moments for this match. And of course, we had Roman Reigns does a Superman punch, Daniel Bryan with a solid knee strike, and Roman Reigns with a spear. And yeah, and we will see Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns as a tag team, the Planet Dogs, right? And then we had a four impromptu matches. Their first impromptu match was Randy Orton versus Mustafa Ali. And I gotta say, that match was not bad actually. And one of the highlight moments was when Ali countered from the RKO and Randy Orton with the RKO out of nowhere. And then next, the second impromptu match we had was for the Women's Tag Team Championship, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross against the team of the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane. And it's about damn time that the Kabuki Warriors won the Women's Tag Team Championship after Asuka hits with a miss inspired by Tajiri and the Great Muta. And we will see some more green miss by Asuka once again. And then next, we have the Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman, who is a mystery partner, defeat the OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson by disqualification. And honestly, I'm not enjoying this after all. Because, you know, it's a filler match, I would say. Yeah, there's no need to talk about this. But what's cool was when Braun Strowman hits with the KO punch after the match. And AJ Styles was like, oh, where am I? I'm glad he didn't suffer an amnesia. But, yeah. Anyways, we had another impromptu match between Chad Gable and King Corbin. And surprisingly, Chad Gable won with a roll-up. But I gotta be honest, this match was not bad at all, actually. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we had a 24-7 title segment. And, yeah, Tamina is back, by the way. And she's currently holding on the 24-7 title. But now, nah, after a funny segment with Funaki or Kung Fu Naki, Carmella with the super kick and Archer with the pin and got back as the 20th time 24-7 champion. And next, we had Charlotte versus Bayley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Well, actually, that match was pretty okay in my opinion. Although, congrats to Charlotte Flair, who is now the 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 time women's champion. And then next we had Seth Rollins versus The Fiend for the Universal Championship that will be taking place inside Hell in a Cell. Oh wait, do I think it's a good match? Do I think it's a bad match? Well, start off with... Well, the first 10 minutes was not that bad. All of a sudden, Seth Rollins, the Beast Slayer, tried to slay the Fiend, which he tried to curb stomp like 11 times or something. Yeah. And then he tried to destroy the Fiend, and nope, it failed. Because he tried to slam with a chair, even to the face or the head, even though with the ladder and the toolboxes, which he failed. And all of a sudden, he took out the Sledge Hammer. Ironically, he was the King Slayer. And now the referee was freaked out. And did you know this was the same referee who botched the ending at the main event at WrestleMania 35? I mean, seriously, 
I get that he gets freaked out whenever Seth Rollins trying to kill the supernatural monster, but seriously, I've seen worse than that. And you know what? You know what happens? Seth Rollins had to do what he had to do. So the referee had to stop this match, end this in a no contest, but not a disqualification. Yeah. The second consecutive main event Hell in a Cell match in a row, we see this a disappointment but even worse. So for some stupid reason, the paramedics decide to stretch her out the Fiend, which is pretty dumb if you ask me, and then Seth Rollins had to monologue him, and then the Fiend comes out and gave him the mandible claw, and the fans are not into it because they were constantly chanting restart the match booze and AEW and yeah they also want a refund as well because of how bad we have for this I mean look what we have this is what happens this is what happens I mean seriously it's all thanks to Vince McMahon right because you know what Please step down from being a CEO and please retire. Cause you know something? We don't want to see some same old storyline or even some old part-timers holding the world title or even have them main event the pay-per-view show. Overall, as for Hell in a Cell 2019, I think the pay-per-view was pretty alright except for the ending because the ending was garbage and crap anyways aew dynamite and wwe nxt is coming up next real soon because you know what i can't wait for another second week of wednesday night war so that's it that's all i have for today folks don't forget to like this video leave a comment Subscribe for more content and join the notification squad by tapping that little bell so you don't want to miss the latest upload on this channel. As always, goodbye, peace, and good day.